Hey guys, here's just another bonus vlog style video. It's an update on the inspector's respiratory condition. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is just every time I have an update on this, I'll just shoot it and string them all together. And once we have a conclusion to this, I will post it. So uh, right now we're just going back to the vet for the inspector's second injection. I peeked in and checked on him yesterday. I didn't take him out or anything. I just took a peek and he looked like his face was less red which is good news, and it looks like that again today. Hi, buddy. Hi, my friend. Let's check you out real quick in the light. You don't want to be messed with, I get it. I understand. So his nostrils and heat pits are way less red. Let's see if, I don't know if there's enough light for you to see. Uh, I'll show you when we get to the vet, but he's looking better. It's real cold out there. It's about 50 degrees outside, so I'm gonna have a bunch of towels in his tub and sort of wrap him up. Hopefully he won't, the cold won't get through to the towels by the time I get in the car and get the car warmed up. We're back from the vet. The inspector is back in his hide. Uh, I didn't pull him out at the vet because it was quick and there just wasn't an opportunity to do so, but uh, they were shocked at how much better he's doing just after three days. Uh, after that initial injection. So they give him another injection and possibly the final one. Uh, we're gonna take him back. He's going back on Monday, which is a week from today, just for a checkup. And uh, if he's doing well, then that should be it for the, um, for the antibiotics. Uh, we, we got some initial uh, information back on what's potentially causing the RI or what is causing the RI. It's a bacteria and we'll know more about what it is um, in the next few days, I'm guessing. But that may mean that I have to tear this enclosure up. I was talking to my buddy Shane over at Evergreen State Reptiles, um, and he mentioned a, a UV wand that, that's like a disinfectant light, which is a possibility. I'm gonna look into it. My concern though is that the inspector tunnels, like he's got a tunnel right here that he goes underground and around. and so. You know, if there's bacteria under that dirt, I don't think there's any way to hit it with UV. But uh, we'll see. We, I may end up tearing this thing out, or maybe I won't have to. Cross your fingers. Okay, here's where we're at with this. We are um, one, two, three. We are three days away from the inspector's hopefully final vet visit. He's looking great, doing great. I had a call from the vet the other day as I was pulling him out to check his mouth uh, to give me the final results of the, um, of the culture. So they found two forms of bacteria in his mouth. One of them is really common to find in snakes' mouths and occasionally causes a respiratory infection if the snake already has um, an immune uh, deficiency problem. Uh, so that one we're not as worried about. The other one is also pretty common to find um, you find them sometimes in, in rodents, so he could have gotten it from eating a rodent. Or you also uh, find it, it, it just grows in their environment sometimes, especially if their environment isn't very clean. Now, I'm pretty fastidious about cleaning all of my enclosures and things like that, and, and I consider myself really clean when it comes to that. However, in talking to her about this bioactive, you know, I put this thing together and I've got a cleanup crew in here and I know that they're they're all good. I see them all the time, the, the springtails and, and isopods. Um, and I spot clean. So if he poops or if I see a urate, I pull that out. However, he, you know, he, he I've talked about his subterranean hide a lot and that goes all the way down to the glass. And I don't ever clean that glass. Like I don't, I haven't really thought to go down and, and really wipe that down when I pull him out of there. Um, and he spends a lot of time there. So, you know, whether he got this respiratory infection from some unclean area of, of his enclosure or not, I'm gonna start really focusing on that where I spray his, his hide and his, the, the, like this piece of wood here that I can pull out spray that down with F10, um, you know, once a week or whatever and keep that clean. But also I got this thing, which is a UV wand. It spits out UVC, which is real bad uh, if you put that on your eyes or your skin. 
and this will this will kill uh, just about any virus or bacteria. So if I wave this about an inch or two over the entire enclosure, uh, anything that's right there, it's not going to kill anything under the, the dirt, but anything that's right there that this light has contact with for about 10 seconds, it will kill. It'll also eventually kill plants and things like that. So I want to be really careful about where I, you know, I'm not going to just uh, wand it over the entire thing. I'm going to try to avoid the plants as much as I can. And it might end up killing the springtails too and isopods that it hits also. Most of those are under the dirt though, so I'm not as worried about that. Um, and again, it's not gonna eradicate everything because I have six, six inches of substrate here uh, that it's not gonna necessarily get. But what it does is it makes it so that that bacteria that it hits can't reproduce. So the vet didn't think that it, that you know, with this type of bacteria, the vet didn't think that I needed to rip out this entire enclosure, fortunately. But there are things that I can do to keep it cleaner. And I mentioned those things, you know, as far as occasionally spraying this side of the hide, the glass and things like that with, with F10 and wanding over everything. And she felt like that was a good idea. Um, so I'm gonna start with that today. I'm gonna pull him out and put him in a tub because you definitely don't want that wand, that light touching an animal. You don't want it, if you, ha if you get one of these, uh, Keep it away from your skin, your eyes, animal skin, eyes, things like that. But they work really well at killing, at basically disinfecting the area with UVC. UVC, as I understand it, is what the sun would give us if we had zero ozone layer, like nothing for an ozone layer. Uh, it would just kill everything. So um, that's the plan. Let's get the inspector out. Hey, buddy. So he's looking real good. Another thing of note, real quick, I put this thermometer, hygrometer, just in his hide to, to see what, what the difference actually is. And it's as I suspected, like right now, the, when I pulled this out, it was 53 and it's 45 up here. So uh, it's usually, for some reason, it's usually more humid sort of in the mornings and at night in there, so I'm not gonna spray that down. If I if I woke up in the morning and it was 45, sort of mid midway up the glass where, where this is, I would I would water the plants. But anyway, let's get him into a bucket and then I'm gonna UV wand this thing. I turned off the grow lights so that you guys could see this. Ooh, look what it does to the water. It makes it all green. That's crazy. That is that is crystal clear water, normally. There's this. There's one of his tunnels that he likes to use. Early morning vet appointment. I've got the inspector right there. He's doing really well, so hopefully this is the last one, but we will see, I'll keep you updated. We are back with the official clean bill of health for the inspector. That makes me really happy. That's about as good as a respiratory infection can go. You catch it, you take them to the vet, you get a couple shots, clean bill of health. Whew. So I wanna thank everybody who expressed concern on Facebook and Instagram. Got a lot of really good advice from people. I think the takeaway here is, you know, this this made me think about how I keep this enclosure. You know, I always just thought, oh, it's clean. I've got I've got the cleanup crew, and I'm spot cleaning. It's fine. It's great. But the fact that he got a respiratory infection, you now he could have gotten it from eating a rat, you know eating a rat or something else. But he could have gotten it from bacteria in the enclosure. So it made me think, how could that have happened? How, you know, what's what potentially is dirty about this enclosure? And it made me make some changes that I already talked about. Uh, but I think it's helpful to pretend like your snake got a respiratory infection. How did it happen? How, how could he have gotten that bacteria? And that's a good thing to think about occasionally. You know, even though I keep my equip my enclosures really well, what could I possibly not be thinking about? 
that's a, I, I think that's a good little game to play occasionally. So again, thank you so much for watching this vlog style, sort of vlog style update video. Uh, I realized that um, Kent is not in these and uh, there's less comedy in these. Let me know if you like this though. You know, if something happens in my reptile room, I, I want to give you guys an honest look at, at what's going on and, and what you have to deal with sometimes. And uh, those are, um, you know, if something's happening, I'm just going to roll the camera and it's not going to be as polished. But let me know in the comments if you do like that or if you don't like it. If you're like, nah, stick with the other stuff. Let me know that too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you Monday for the upload of the regular Green Room Pythons video.